Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Woodard uh, at Brain Center at HealthWorks and uh, we're here to talk a little bit about how neurology uh, is a little bit different uh, depending upon where you go. Here at HealthWorks we do neurological examinations. The sheer beauty of it is to take the information that was gathered uh, after performing a neurological examination on a patient, taking all of that information and um, finding out what areas of the brain uh, are affected. To do a neurological examination, we, we do it uh, for the sheer purpose of diagnosing what a person might have going on with their body, in particular with their nervous system. Their brain and the tail of the brain being the spinal cord, part of the central nervous system. And whereas the nerves that come off the spinal cord to the periphery or the peripheral nervous system. Someone might see a neurologist uh, following a blow to the head after having a stroke or having seizures, but also some people might just have symptoms that came about over time. They're losing their memory, uh, they're not being able to grasp conversations as well as they used to, or they might have unexplained symptoms like nausea or vomiting or um, headaches, um, ocular headaches, or vision problems, or just not being able to have the correct cognitive functions. They're not being able to grasp things like they used to. So when you go see a neurologist, uh, the neurologist will do a series of tests to determine what um, or where the problem may be occurring in the brain. Uh, we check for asymmetries, we check for um, the, the coherence, you know, seeing which areas of the brain are talking to each other properly. Uh, in a neurological examination, there's a series of tests, and every neurologist has that in their bag of tricks to determine what is going on in the brain. So there's a variety of neurological tests that can be done, but a functional neurologist will take that one fact that we have seven tests that showed up as a right cerebellum issue and will determine an exercise that's specific for the patient to help correct that abnormality. So a, a specific exercise could be uh, tracking uh, their eyes uh, from mid midline to the left and then back to center. To the left and back to center. To the left and back to center. And that exercise will help strengthen the right cerebellum. And so uh, if we do, we send the patients home with this and to strengthen that, um, we're going to get some really good results. Now, here's the, the, here's the, the kicker though. If you do not uh, if you go too far in your, in your exercise training and um, you could have major issues. So let me explain that. We have a little piece of equipment that it's called the pulse oximeter. Now a pulse oximeter is something that will check your pulse uh, and your oxygen levels. If we actually put that on a person's finger and, and we determine uh, their normal resting heart rate uh, and their oxygen levels. And then we do a particular exercise or task and that heart rate goes down. We are on the right track. We are doing an exercise that the body likes, that's very specific for the person. And when we do that uh, for one minute and it just keeps on going down and down and everything is calm, we're doing a great exercise and a great service for that patient. Now, for the next two minutes, if that heart rate starts going up and it goes higher and higher and higher, we're actually doing harm for the next two minutes. So for a three minute exercise, we've done good for one minute, but we've done really a bad and a disservice for the next two minutes. Getting very specific for each patient and determining what uh, range we want to be in and for the, their metabolic rate is really the art of functional neurology.
My name is Dr. Michael Pierce. I'm one of the functional neurologists or chiropractic neurologists board certified that assists uh, Dr. Woodard in his work. You may have noticed with some of the therapies we showed that while she was standing on one platform, she was very, very wobbly and she couldn't stand up straight. When we put the foam under her and took away the, the, the special board with the rubber ball under it, that was much more stable and she could stand. This is how we dose our therapy, just like dosing drugs in therapies for patients that have brain injuries or brain damage or any kind of functional lesion that isn't truly damaged. The rehabilitation and the fix for them is to dose them just like a drug, to make sure it's not too much and not too little. When you saw her perform the task where the doctor asked her to take her finger and touch a particular named finger to a particular object with a color versus take her elbow and touch a different object with a different color, these are using her parietal lobe on the opposite side to decide spatially where she's going to go, which finger she's going to use, and which part of her limb she's going to use. This task is something we could ramp up for her to add more complexity by giving her headphones. The doctor would speak into her ear and we would have only the right headphone give her the sound of his instructions, saying to her, use your right pinky on the yellow ball or use your right elbow on the blue ball. And in that way, when she listens through her right ear, she would hear this in her left temporal lobe and then she would fire her left parietal lobe to tell her right arm to do the task. So this is a way of ramping up more firing on the left side of her brain by adding a particular ear for instruction instead of both ears. When a doctor does a functional neurology plan for a patient, he or she has to dose that medicine. It's just like dosing a drug. As they decide how much intensity and how much time the patient can tolerate, they have to watch things like their pupils, they have to watch their breathing, they have to watch their whether their palms sweat or whether they get um, hot and flushed in their hands. They monitor their pulse oxygenation on their finger and they monitor other signs beyond those like balance and coordination and eye movements. All these fatigue signs will show the doctor whether the patient is fatigued or if they can handle more stimulus or if they need to back off and do less stimulus. This is what helps the brain rehabilitate and recover from injuries that are either um, true injuries that you see on an MRI or injuries that are subtle that are called functional lesions that are not really a pathology and don't show up on an MRI. And that shows the patient uh, that they can get better with the right dosage, whether it's a true pathology or just a functional problem.